Hello and welcome to the York Creators Podcast. My name is Ben Porter and each week you can join me as I chat to someone from York's creative community. This week's guest is Joanne Coates. Joanne is a documentary photographer and the founder of LensThink, a social enterprise set up to promote diversity in the creative arts. LensThink put on socials and pop-up exhibitions in locations all around Yorkshire and help share artist opportunities. In Joanne's work as a photographer, she is interested in working life and class inequality, which is represented in her diverse portfolio of personal and commissioned work. She has been published by the BBC, Vice, The Telegraph and The Guardian, and has had her approach to photography described as democratic and poetic. In this episode, we discuss how photography can be used as a medium to highlight underrepresented issues, the social responsibility artists have when saying they are giving people a voice, and the need for a more representative generation of artists to become the creative future of tomorrow. Joe, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. So you're someone who grew up in the north and then you went down to uni in London and then you decided to come back. Uh, do you want to tell me a bit through, talk me through what drew you back up here? Because most people would say the jobs are down there, stay down there. So what went through your mind? Um, well, I think it was quite hard because at 16 I left the north and I didn't really see that many opportunities up here. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of felt like there wasn't any opportunities and I thought that I had to, to be a photographer go to London but that's not the case at all and I think that's something you have to work out on your own but I went to study at the University of the Arts and that was my kind of dream place to study but when I actually got to London I really didn't like it okay um and it's it's just a very different kind of creative scene and it's good and you have to go there for work anyway but it's not somewhere that um I really enjoyed living in and I realized that all the work I was doing was about rural places and about the countryside or isolation or working people so I was actually traveling up north the whole time that I was in London studying to make work so I ended up kind of thinking I went to work at Unseen Photo Festival in Amsterdam um, for three months as soon as I graduated and then because all my work was about the north I was like well why don't I go and live in the north so it kind of made sense. Yeah, sure. So what did you think of the course? Was it worth doing or not? Because I hear very mixed things about creative courses. It's, I always say like when people ask you, like, should they study photography? It's a personal decision. Like for me, it was very difficult because I found it quite tough. I loved having access to the dark rooms. We had like amazing color dark rooms and I really loved that. And I loved being able to print like your own book and to do kind of like poster printing and to do exhibitions and things like that but there are things that you could do without going to university and it's not really an art college anymore universities are more business models Mm -hmm. um and as well say if you want to do photography and it's more technical then you don't need to be at university whereas like i really wanted that theory the ethics um, so for me, like the theory was worth it, yeah. but it's very cutthroat. And I would say like, consider where you go to university because I just wanted to go to this course because that's where my favorite photographers had gone. Um, and I really loved the tutors and I still think the tutors are good, but it wasn't really a place where like a working class person fit, like fit in at all. Sure. So I found it really tough in that respect. So what are some of the themes that you explore in your work? Um, I explore class inequalities Um, work in life so kind of looking at farming and fishing I also look at mental health so I would say it's not necessarily marginalized issues but issues that don't maybe get represented as much why is photography a good medium to get that across I think that you should I always think it's about storytelling Mm -hmm. um, and about who should tell what story and why Um, and I think photography really translates storytelling really well I don't know it's always weird because I almost say that I'm not a photographer obviously I use photography and it's very much photography what I do but it's more about speaking to people and listening to people um, and getting to know them so in a way like the photography is 10% of what I do and I think for photography documentary photography I think is it's almost a different medium to I was, it's really difficult with photography because you've got like different sections and they're so different but they're equally as important so like it doesn't matter if you're like a music photographer commercial photographer like what you do is they're they're really they're almost entirely different jobs and they all have merits in their own rights as well yeah it's interesting because um, I remember talking to somebody on a previous podcast about this it's like people get confused thinking photography is the thing it's like photography is a vehicle to do other things 
um, and it can go in so many different directions. I think that's definitely true. I'd like I can't really describe like why photography for me because I was more interested in literature okay. and reading. Like apparently, like there's a story of like I didn't speak until I was two and a half like any words at all but I used to like grab little books and kind of like just say entire sentences but in baby talk and then I just started speaking like full sentences so I think that like it's always been about storytelling and then photography is what helps me to do that and that's why I use it what is it you want people to take away from your work um I think that's up to them more than up to me because I can want them to take away a lot I think what I want to do is to be able to get people to ask questions Mm -hmm. so it's like for me it's a medium where you're like you can put a story out there and I'm not going to be able to make the social change that needs to happen and that work isn't going to be able to make the social change but you can make that an issue that people are aware of and you can make that an issue that people start to ask questions about and then policy makers and change makers can see that work and start seeing that that is an issue that needs representation yeah definitely and it's it's been part of a a bigger issue as well because people again it's another misconception that one thing on its own will change people's minds but if you get a lot of people standing up and saying actually no this is something we care about um that's what changes people's minds over time yeah definitely so what is invisible britain so invisible britain is a book it's set up by a guy called Paul, who's a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. So he kind of makes films about deindustrialization and housing. And um, so he decided to set up this book with 40 different photographers from across the UK. Um, And it's curated by Chloe Juna, who's based in Brighton, and Laura Dickin, who is based in the Midlands. So they chose 40 different photographers to work with and to represent stories that are marginalized from the mainstream media. And you got to pick your story. And what I really liked about it is so uh, usually you'll kind of go take a portrait and you might work with um, a journalist or you might kind of write for that person. But there's there's a lot in photography where you say you're giving someone a voice, but they already have their own voice mm. and they should be allowed to speak for themselves. So in, in Invisible Britain, they wrote, there's like a text next to the image, but they got to write that text. Okay. Um, or you re- could record audio as well. And then it was translated. So they actually get to be as much a part of that book as the photographer. It's an equal footing. Nice. Is that out now or is it still in production? It's, um, I have a copy with me. Um, it is out now, but it's available to pre-order on Amazon. Okay. So I don't know when it'll get delivered. Okay. Is there a pre-order link that could pop in the description? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so what else are you working on other projects? Um, quite a bit at the moment. <laughs> Um, I'm going to be speaking at the Photographer's Gallery on Friday with an organisation that I run called Lensfink. Lensfink is it's kind of strange because um, I didn't really see it as part of my practice, but more and more it, it's got the same kind of like ethics and moral code as my photography, so it kind of goes hand in hand. But it's an organisation to bring about diversity within photography in the north of England. Um, So that's what I'm speaking with. And then I've been working on a lot of projects with that. So working with schools in the countryside and working on like with young women on um, empowerment projects in the north. And we set up um, a series of arts residencies with the Forestry Commission at Dolby Forest. Mm -hmm. So it was enabling um, artists to be paid for a residency and to deliver workshops. but I could talk about it for ages. But uh, I won't. How is it, how is it run? Is it like a collective model then? It's so I just started it because when I moved back to the north, I kind of felt really isolated, and I knew that there was loads of brilliant photographers, but I didn't like all across Yorkshire. There's all these kind of creative people and groups, but you don't want to always have to travel to Leeds or to Bradford or to Hull or like even to Newcastle or to Middlesbrough. And so I was like, why is there nothing kind of going on and there's um, Mini Click in Brighton who are a really great kind of social photography, I guess collective, yeah. um, and they were doing really great things. And so I just decided to kind of set it up. And it, what it does is it, it's a social, but it travels around. So that say if you're in Huddersfield or Halifax and there, you know, you don't get to go to different events, the reason it travels is that there'll always be, it'll eventually kind of come to you and you can maybe speak there or 
you can get represented there. So we've done different talks. We did a talk in Hull and I really liked that format. So we had like um, someone who'd been graduated a month, someone who had been working in the industry for four years and then someone who's a lecturer and had been working in the industry for like 20 years. So all of those people had a panel discussion about mm. photography um, and it's it's come like, it's just free. It's not, I don't get any money from doing it, but I try and create opportunities for artists where they can get paid. Um, and that's what I'm kind of working on at the moment, working with more organizations who can pay artists to do basically artist residencies or projects that will inspire change or working with schools where you can mentor young people into getting into the creative industries and not having to leave the area. That sounds great. So what's the best piece of advice that a photographer's ever given you? Um, so I think there's quite a few. There's quite a few people who've given me really good advice. Like I had um, a mentorship with um, a man who works at Metro, but he's a photographic artist as well. He works at Metro Imaging in London and um, his name's Steve McLeod. And so I was in my foundation year and I was kind of worried because we'd you have these big crits at art school and they're really strange because you think that like everyone who goes to art school like I get really excited about seeing people's work and you know you can give constructive criticism but they they become really scary things okay and like quite negative and I think I was said that I was quite worried because I was the, maybe the quietest person in the room and especially in um, my foundation year I was really shy so I found it quite difficult to show my work and to like speak up and I said, oh, I'm worried that people will think that you don't care about what you do because you're not the loudest person in the room. But what he said is it doesn't ha- it doesn't it's not the loudest person in the room who makes the most impact. It's the one that cares the most about their work. So that kind of made me feel like I could be myself and I don't have to be the loudest person in the room or super extroverted. I can just be who I am. Yeah. And photography is a good medium for that as well. Yeah, because definitely. you don't you don't have to talk. You can just go around and take a lot of photos. And then that is in itself is storytelling yeah exactly so what themes are you looking forward to exploring in your own work in the future the projects that you do best are stuff that you love so i'd like i'm I'm kind of like obsessed with maritime history and with fishing so i've focused a lot on the fishing industry and with farming because i came from a rural background and i'm also like a massive wrestling fan okay cool. and so i've been working on a project about women in wrestling um, and so like things that you're kind of obsessed with, then I, f- I think that that's the, the way you can go. And then obviously like within, like if there's five things that you're obsessed with, which most people have more than that, within those five things, there's 10 different projects for each one. Um, and I kind of find it hard sometimes because I've always got like three uh, personal projects on the go at once. And sometimes you kind of have to rein in your ideas and be quite strict and say like, I'm just going to go work on this yeah i definitely know that feeling do you ever feel burnt out when you've just got too many projects and it's like you do a bit of this a bit of that and you just feel like you don't get anywhere you do and i think sometimes it's hard because you're excited about like you want to stay up to like one in the morning working on different things and i'm sure it's the same with the podcast like you want to stay up and you want to edit and you want to get it done and it's what you're passionate about and it's what you love but you also need to sleep at least yeah. like six <laughs> hours what are you excited about outside of photography um, probably book like it's really difficult because I love photography and I really love other photographers but I read more than I look at mm-hmm. photos so I really um, I like literature so there's an author called Malachi Talek who's from Shetland who I really like and he writes about it's kind of about the landscape but it's more about personal experience and loss um, and there's a writer from Hebden Bridge called Ben Myers and I really love it's like kind of um, again it touches on the landscape but it's also like dark noir and um, so I'm really interested in that um, and I guess I don't know like the things that I photograph that yeah, I'm sure. interested in. So what about in York is there anything exciting in York that's going on you think more people should know about? I think the Art of Protest Gallery are doing some interesting things because it was like I don't know, like when I first came back after graduation, and it can be quite hard because if it's somewhere that you've spent a lot of time, you have this like numbness to a place, so you're not as excited by it as someone who's like moving there for the first time. So you're kind of a bit like, I want more from things than maybe someone who has just moved here. 
And so like when I saw Art of Protest Gallery, I was like, wait a second, this is in York. And I think um, Jeff, whose second name I can't remember, Clark. Yep. is doing really exciting things. When they had the opening and they had the uh, the wall opposite, and I just thought that's really exciting and it's a little bit different. And it's kind of nice to see. And I think as well, they do things that involve the public. So the I can't remember where it was. There's a pub um, where you go out past the river and they were doing um, like a street art mural. Uh, the one in Fulford, the yeah. Light Horseman, is it? I think and in the car park, yeah. Yeah, just there. And they had a day and it was a weekend day where they were doing it like publicly. So they had this famous street artist, but it was public. So people who were driving past and who might not always get involved in the art scene could see something and be involved in it, which I really liked. Um, I also really like Aesthetica. Um, so the conference that they have in May, um, I really like because they had a really good panel at the last one, which was about diversity. And they had the, um, the curator from the Serpentine Gallery and they had people from like all like all over really international. And um, I just really liked it because I, like you don't expect to go to a really exciting panel talk about diversity in York. And I really liked that. It was a little bit different. Um, but there's, there's a lot of things um, like print stuff. And print stuff is like I really like what they did, and like I went to the, um, like to the, the to the fair on the Saturday, and like the they like the only thing with it is you want to buy everything. Yeah, I've got so. tons. <laughs> <laughs> so what about if you could do one thing to improve the creative scene in York? What would you do? And make it more diverse. Okay. So I think that's difficult in York though, because as a city, it's not that diverse. It's not that diverse, but I think there is a problem in that if you look at the people who are holding creative positions and it's really difficult because that like this is the same with every big city in the country the people are mainly white they're mainly middle class and it's just it's 2018 and we need to kind of like look at who's telling what story and why and there are like it is hard in york because york is a quite a privileged place to live but there are places that aren't privileged and those young people also need to work in the creative scene and maybe they need to tell their stories. So I've worked in Hull a lot and I worked in Hull um, for the City of Culture for 2017 with young people. Um, and it's young people from the Warren and like it was a really like diverse group of different needs and um, like some of them had picked up a camera before and some of them were more interested in spoken word. Some of them just wanted to use their phone cameras but it's allowing people to tell their own stories. So like maybe like, I think, I don't know which organizations, but having people who would go on to say like a housing estate and work with that group and say to them like, we believe in you to be the creative future of tomorrow, because if that doesn't happen, then it's always going to be the same. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing it's said time and time again when I've asked this question. It's always artist development. We need to develop more artists. And cause if you don't, it's just whoever can afford to do it will get through. And whoever can't will just end up doing something else. And you lose you lose the voice, don't you? Like people, there's been research done into the amount of musicians in the chart with degrees. And it's just gone up and up and up and up, up because they're the only people who can seem to have both the time and the money to be able to afford to keep pursuing a music career when there's like very almost next to no support in the music industry for young, young artists. It's if you've got a hit, yeah, we'll give you some money, but if you don't, you're on your own. And that eliminates all the, the working class and um, it, from having advice. I don't know, it's difficult. Like if you look at some of the greatest lyricists in the history of music, it's almost like street poetry. Yeah. And you know, that like that does belong to the working class. So it's like, why don't we empower these people? Because they've kind of proved that they have the merit in different generations, but we still kind of ignore them. Mm. Yeah, it's a tricky thing to solve. <laughs> yeah, it's really difficult, and I don't really know how to solve it, but I think that it should be spoken about more. Yeah. Well, at least it, like if you're documenting it in your work, that's getting people talking about it. Um, and we just need to get more people doing the same. <laughs> and there is there's that conference in York on November the 10th called York Has Class. Okay. Um, so it's run by um, a guy who's from West Yorkshire, but he's studying at York University called Connor. Um, and he's set up this conference. And so he's having speakers from all over who are key speakers on class and how to improve and make things diverse. And I think the reason he's having it at York University during Freshers is to try and create those conversations in a place where it might not usually happen. 
and it'll be showing on November the 10th at York University. So what's next for you? Um, well, I'm going to London on Friday to do a portfolio review. So the Photographers Gallery have this. It's really good, actually, and you can apply from anywhere. And I would advise like young people in York to do it. So it's called Folio Friday, and it's completely free. And you apply with a link showing your work. And you don't have to be a graduate. You don't have to be someone who studied. You just have to be a photographer. But you get to put your work in front of um, the like the director of the photographer's gallery. You get to put your work in front of someone who will organise an organisation and in front of Steve McLeod, who is from Metro Imaging and often mentors young artists. So anyone can apply to it. Um, and you go and it's a really like safe, welcoming place to show your work that doesn't cost anything. And, and as long as you can kind of get down there, then it's available for everyone really. Um, and then after that, I'm showing some work as part of 209 Women, mm-hmm. which is a project set up by Hilary Wood um, and it's being curated by Tracy Marshall and Cheryl Newman. And so that's going to be shown at the Houses of Parliament from December the 14th. And um, I'm doing a work with a project with Women in Farming. So I'm working with YAS, which is the Yorkshire Agricultural Society. Um, on promoting women in farming and showing how attitudes have kind of changed and it kind of it's going to be more in there so I'm recording audio for it as well as photos and then another project I'm working on which I'm hoping to kind of finish by March next year is about rural schools in the Yorkshire Dales closing so I've been working closely with um, three different schools in the Yorkshire Dales and a lot of those schools in the Dales are closing due to all different reasons and sometimes it's for it has to close but sometimes it's unnecessary but as that goes on, I've been working with the children themselves and so taking portraits, but also getting the children, like doing workshops with them, almost like you would for business, um, or like business branding workshop, but on, on why a school shouldn't close or what it means to them. And they're all under 10, so it can be um, quite challenging sometimes, but it's a really, I'm like a project I'm really passionate about. Then I've just been working on the fishing project, so I'm going back to Shetland in the start of December and then working with the BBC a little bit more as well. So BBC, the BBC are going to publish the Women in Wrestling article in the next few weeks as well. Cool, there's tons on it. <laughs> I was just trying to think of yeah. like, uh... oh, That's great, no, it's good that you're busy. So if people are interested in seeing some of your work or finding out more about Lens Think, where do they go? Um, so for my work, my website or my Instagram are the best places to see new work. My Instagram's kind of like um, almost a diary of what I'm doing and work that I'm doing so that is Joanne R. Coates um, and it's C-O-A-T-E-S because no one okay. ever understands my name but hopefully because <laughs> we're in York they will yeah, cool. um, and the website is www.joannecoates.co.uk and for Lensfink we have an Instagram a Facebook group and a Twitter and the Facebook group is really good if you kind of want to get involved in a conversation so we have people kind of contributing to the, the group and any events that we're doing, we share on that group and opportunities for artists in the local area. So I'll, I'll be sent some or I'll kind of find them by myself and post any opportunities that are happening. So if there's opportunities that I think that commissions that people could benefit from, and it's not just photography, it's all different art mediums. So I'll post them on the group. And then we also do like... Um, there's a lot of people will be having exhibitions or events in different cities across Yorkshire. And then, yeah, the Lensfink Instagram is uh, Lensfink Yorkshire. And on there, we have interviews with different artists. So um, artists that have worked in the North, that are from the North, or who have made work in the North. So one of the, my favourite interviews was with Ella Murphy, who is Tish Murphy's daughter. So it was about her mum's work. And we posted the work but did a conversation alongside it and if people also want to take over the Instagram then it's open like there's no kind of barriers to that if, if you've got an event that you want to promote or something that you want to share then please get in touch and we'll be happy to have you on there as well that sounds great well thanks for being on the podcast well thank you <laughs>